Hey guys, welcome to episode five in a playlist about a Bajo Quinto, which is a guitar that has popularity in playing Norteño music, was which is in the north of Mexico, which it used to be what is now the southern part of the United States, especially out in the west. Uh, the playlist is up there. Got quite a few episodes. We talk about the guitar where we got it. Um, number two, the materials and methods. You might need to fix something that's tore up like this one is. Um, in episode three, our guest Manuel Ayala talked all things Bajo, uh, talked about construction, tradition, players, builders. You don't want to see that. And then the last episode, we took a look at demolition. Like, is that three or four? Anyway, just pull up the playlist. But now we're at the point where we're talking about this thing has a terribly sunken top. The bridge was really heavy and ornate on this guitar. It wasn't reinforced correctly. And we've talked about the forces and things that you're basically a flat top guitar and like an arch top has a lot of direct pull. And some of the strings on this guitar are the size of your little finger due to the nature of the music it's supposed to play. Uh, I did something about oil field rig up trucks and stresses and flat top guitars. If you care to watch that, it's up there. It's full of humor and some journal of theoretic biology uh, stuff that I make up. And now I've given enough time for you to see another one. Ken Parker did a video about the evolution of the arch top guitar, and it's got a lot of good structural stuff in there if you like it now we are traveling down the road where there's a lot of demarcations going on we took the back off in the last episode and did what we did now we're going to be into a world of okay we've passed that point now we're going to have to make some decisions are we going to take off parts of the guitar are we going to add stuff and we are going to focus on one of the major deficits in this guitar and that is that it has a sunken top that is so bad that the action is so high that but well, it's not anything that surprises us but we're used to using arch tops a uh, string action like that doesn't bother us the neck isn't really cut loose and we've learned that sometimes this part or this part bowing in is actually what's behind the high action on an arch top and that's something different that we can go ahead and use one of these bridge structures that I put in these dual tone bar or configuration catalog arch tops and we've had some good success with that but this time what we're going to be looking for is number one do you have the tools you need are you thinking about the playability at the end? I'm not sure the playability on this guitar was excellent, even though the top of it says there's wear marks where it was strummed to death and it's worked thin. But when you add material, you're going to affect, affect the playability. And then there's always the economics. What did I buy this guitar for? If someone brought me one like it, would I be able to tell them, hey, I know what to do? And you're going to put about this much in it because I got this many hours into it. And is the outcome going to be worth the value of the guitar? Is it just something you say, hey, you know what? I would just enjoy it the way it is. Or, you know, if you really want this, there's a lot of work to do. So be fair and honest about that. And part of the reason I do this is some of us couldn't afford those even the cheap catalog guitars at Christmas time. So we spend our elderly years chasing them down and then you watch me put <laughs> these things back together and hopefully you're not going as broke as I am doing it. But yeah, that's kind of what this channel is all about. And finally, I want you to think about how much of the original instrument is going to be left when you're done. If the answer is zero or 10%, just go get a kit and put it together and come up with a good product. 
and put this one back on the wall. But that said, you've been warned. Let's get to the bench and figure out what we can do with this sunken top. All right, guys, let's get the camera in shape here. That should do it. Can we see up here? There we go. All right, it looks like the camera's in shape. Now, the last episode, we were pulling out braces and all kinds of things here and getting the strings off of this, and it was kind of a mess. Now we've got it down to a point where we're going to be able to talk about getting this back into shape and getting this flat and putting in new braces and reinforcing things. So a couple things I want to tell you about here. First off, you see that line right there? That is the pencil line that somebody did to put the braces in. So when I'm working this, I want to get down to there. There were nails right there. You see that? That's a nail. So this uh, longitudinal brace or running with the grain brace was meant to reinforce around the sound hole and then these, this brace came over here and it's supposed to be bigger and we're going to make it a lot bigger but you can see this curving was all cut in individual pieces. I want to leave that alone. That's special to me. But what happened was on this brace right here and I think you can see it let's turn this I'll turn the camera over the style was like a Antonio de Torre you put these side braces that keep everything together here on top of these braces so when these things start to go bad what ends up happening is this started to shrink everything pulled down this started to squat this used to be over here there's one like it over here and it sat on top of this brace so what it did was when it failed it pushed this out that's why this side is bowed out now while we were working on tearing things apart now we've got a crack that runs from all the way over here up to here so every time i flex the body you can see it. So we're going to have to get this thing hydrated up. But the first thing I want to do is think about reinforcing this area here. This this area by the headstock seems to be okay, but where our flexing and bowing starts is here and here and then this area here. I would really like to build this up a sixteenth of an inch with some good mahogany veneer and then as that is applied here we can flatten this out and steam this out and get everything back to flat here and then we're going to end up putting support for the bridge over here a bridge plate instead of these two little strips that were here with the little holes in them that you saw in the last episode so using a number of conventional tools like a chisel we want to make sure that this is sharp and we don't want to go through the top because it's anything but flat but we're going to go along and get these braces off of here if i run into trouble i'm going to steam everything up but like i said i have had my little trick of putting a sponge in a soap dish and putting it in the case for the better part of a couple of weeks now and that had literally no effect on anything so again i want to get this part nice and flat here and um, i can also use the taped off razor blade to get in here and do what i need to do isn't that an annoying sound I really want to get this flat to where I can see those lines that were drawn in there by the person that made this guitar. Now you want to remember that you can cut your fingers off and live with it, but this guitar is irreplaceable. Right. So you want to remember any ridge that comes up here when I do an overlay of veneer in here that's going to cause a problem. We want this 
nice and flat. We don't want to take away old wood, uh, original wood here, but the bracing and stuff, that's what we want to take away. Don't start making this any thinner than we have to. We already have to reinforce this area where some of the wood pulled up. But I will tell you what, working on this, when I'm chiseling on it or whatever, it starts to put off a scent that smells a lot like cedar. So I'm wondering if this isn't a clue that this was made out of Montezuma Cypress in Mexico. All right, I'm gonna get this leveled out. This is tedious work that you don't need to see, especially if I blow it so you can laugh when I punch a hole through it. Okay, I wanted to get you a close up here. There's some bleed off on these braces and they seem to be pretty solid. So I'm gonna leave those alone, but I do wanna get this bleed off that's here, running along here, because when I go to reinforce this, I want the reinforcement to ride right up against that brace because it's pretty solid. Yeah, I got my my girl cousin's shaving brush here. That works out great, doesn't it? Here we get these nice and clean. And I've got a little sanding block with some 400 grit on it that I just made out of a piece of whatever. And you'll find that that corner is pretty good at knocking off glue bits here and there. People are thinking, well, why don't you just make a new top? Well, why don't you just get a new life, right? Hey, I got an idea. You just, you just die and I'll let somebody else be born for you. And that'll solve our problem of your age, right? Yeah, no. So I'm going through a lot of trouble here to get these edges and stuff clean while well, this is a mess. So why is that? Well, this is 16th inch mahogany veneer. You can get it at a mahogany veneer getting place. You see, I want to lay that in there and I want to reinforce this. So when I press everything and steam everything, I want these pieces to fit right in here. Now, that bracing is going to give me a problem. So let me show you a little trick. So we're going to take some wide painter's tape, okay? And we are going to lay it right up against that brace and go over the top of that curving there and right up against the side and right here. We're going to make sure that it's really pronounced wherever that is, okay? And we're going to come down to where the end of this is because that's where the brace will go across here. Uh -oh, I'm getting the union problem with the chick flick teal pointers. So, you know that they are heirs to the pointer sister's fortune. You know that, right? So, jump for my love, people. So, do you see what I'm doing here? We put these little pieces of tape. We're going to make sure that we press down right where. We're going to overlap these like so. Right there. Right there. Now, you guys may remember I did a hole, fixed a hole in the Martin episode right up there right about now. Yeah, I think that's where it is. Anyway. And we are going to put this one right here. See that? You see that? Now, we're going to take a magic marker. That's what they called them in my age. 
before they were called Sharpies. And we're just going to go along that edge. Do you see what's happening here? See that? Do you see that? Now, I also have a thinner piece of this tape, which I am going to use on the overlaps to make sure that they don't come apart when I pull this off, because guess what, peeps? This right here, Can you see this? Now I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm gonna cut on that line right there, like so. See that? And then I'm gonna follow on the inside Of this line then I can take a flat sharp object like so and work it under the edge here and then I can peel this whole thing up and it's going to give me a pattern Voila. Now, I'm just going to put this on a wide enough piece of mahogany veneer, which I happen to have a whole pack of over there, and I am just going to go along, and then I'll go to the uh, jigsaw and cut that out. Now, will it fit over here? No. Why? Because the instrument wasn't perfect. That's what makes it, that's right, perfect. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing by going over the rest of the bottom of the soundboard because we're going to end up laying some, basically some planks of that veneer that's going to have to be cut to match these phony edges, but you do it the exact same way. It's just a little wider. We might have to put bracing strips on this tape, even. Notice that the edge of the tape is here. And there's going to be a brace right here. That's why there's that gap. Now you can see that this guitar was anything but perfect, but we are going to cut reinforcement veneer for anything that's in blue, and then you're going to have some bracing here. The back is a different story. I think we are going to replace the back, but this allows you to basically just pull this up and lay it wherever you need to, to make the radius of your patches go where they need to and fit that odd I'm chasing down my pack of veneer here 
So we're basically just laying this veneer in here close to that edge and cutting it here and then matching. It'll take about a piece and a half of this. Okay, I've cut this piece of veneer down a bit so I can butt it up to here. Remember, I'm going to want to run this one to the edge of that line where the brace goes. You also want to remember that this end is going to come in a little bit. So I can line this up as I will. And then I can take my Sharpie and just run that edge there and one here and then I can take my razor can you see what's going on here yeah and just run it down there not too deep just to score that tape a little bit like so and then I just set that off to the side and grab this edge of the tape as well as this one and pull it up now this is very monotonous stuff but I can grab this now and lay this along that edge like so. And I can take this to a belt sander. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I have fun with a belt sander, but I can take this to a bandsaw and cut that part out, and this will fit right in here perfectly. Okay, you see that? Now, before we pull the tape off, we are just going to go over that edge with this 400 grit sandpaper and knock off any burrs. Take our brush. This is why there's sound holes in guitars. Right here. You can see that? I don't know what you thought it was, but right there, that's why. And then we just take this, flip it around, and it sits right there. And then, aren't we glad that we didn't cut this up here because where that line was, it's actually where the tape goes is where this line will have to be. Now we're going to take two more pieces. Mysteriously, this one can be used to cut this one. This one can be used to cut this one. Do you see that? My, how perfect. All right, things went pretty good here, believe it or not. Everything is up to that line right there where the brace will go. These fit in here nice. And then we've got the left-handed one which follows the curving. And then we have the right-handed one here which follows the curving. And they all end up right at that line. The only problem that we had is right down here that little piece chipped off and I have one that will fit right in. Hold that line, mister. Hey, Niedemeyer, whatever happened to you, son? All right, guys, let's take a look here. We can um, pull these out in panels and go to work on flattening 
this out by gluing this on here and that should work. No, that's not what we want to do. You want to remember that the thicker element and the drier element of these two is likely to make the other one follow the same course. So let's pull the tape off of here and, and see what we got. Again, no. I want to show you another little trick that you're going to find simply and utterly disamazing. I'll be right back. Okay, check this out. This is called a body press. I did an episode, a long episode about structure and stuff, and I'll put a link to it up there if I haven't given it to you already. But basically, what this allows you to do once you get these things stuck off the California desert sun. So oh, look at that. It got hot somewhere. But you see this? This is for a sound hole in the neck to fit in here. So I would simply flip this upside down. Yeah, that's cork paper. And I would set the guitar body on here. Then I would take this part. Now this is normally upside down. You can pop a neck off with this. You've seen this. But anyway, I would simply do this, put the body in here, and clamp this down. The problem is, is that this body has the back of it off. So I would simply crush this. So what the goal is here is I am trying to get this part of the body as flat as possible by pushing down and clamping it and then injecting some steam and that way everything will get nice and flat. Then we'll store these where they're stacked up and they remain flat. They don't want to warp and all that kind of thing. But these are going to become really important to the next step because we need something that will fit right in here and this same exact part that these puzzle pieces fit into. This is going to be brilliant. You need to sit down. Okay, I have a piece of plywood here that is roughly the size of a guitar body except for this little part right here. So, I think that I can take the wider part of this right here and I can pull these out of here like so and I can lay let me make sure the camera angle is right so you are completely and utterly disamazed when I do this I can lay this here and this here line them up like so and scoot these around where I don't waste wood and take one of these and trace around this and then go to a bandsaw, which I will do right now. Okay, are you ready for this? I'm not sure you are. You are. This, my friends, if you made my Christmas card list, fits right in there. So now what? Well, I can take this part, I can slide it under the guitar and around the neck until the sound holes fit in like that. And now I can take a couple of pieces of blocking that I have cut that are going to take me above the top of the guitar. And I want to do this equidistant everywhere. Like so. And then, since that is like that, I can put this on the top and line up my clamps and pull this down and then 
inject steam into it and leave it sit for a couple days and let's do this backwards don't ask no you can't have them this part will be flat once it's flat I can go over and make sure that nothing is sticking up with my various woodworking tools fill this in and then I can put the jigsaw puzzle back together like so of course without this big thick piece of wood in here because we would really hate to have the tonal qualities of this fine instrument jeopardize okay guys i wanted to give you a quick shot at what this is going to look like again this is sunken right here this part sits right there you see that i can adjust it back and forth anywhere and then because this is flat you can look and see just how much out of whack that top is by how much it dips down in here I can stick my little finger in up to there and then when I reach in from the bottom I can push up I could even clamp this right here but I don't want to focus the pressure look how much that's moving I can also look at the sides and see what's going on I may put a clamp over here remember this side has a crack in it I want to get the bottom done or the top the soundboard done first and then we're gonna have a lot to do on the back side because we're putting a new back on but again this part right here is going to be literally sandwiched between this and this and before I start to tighten it up I'm going to blow some steam in there with this gadget made from a cappuccino maker purchased at Acton Women's Club in Acton California cultural capital world all right maybe this is a good time to end this episode okay I think I lost the purists pretty early on when I started talking about using jigsaw puzzle pieces and everything but there is a <laughs> some level of reality to the path I'm following down the the bracing in this guitar was cutting loose everywhere um, as things dried out um, things started kicking this way and that way and there's a chain reaction that happens and I think that maybe in the next couple of episodes you're gonna realize is that as we fix some of those things that went south on us over time in the store window that there's a chain reaction of things that will be set off by us fixing certain major elements of the guitar so a watch for that don't forget there is a playlist up here that's i think pretty enjoyable whether it's a bajo quinto or just a flat top guitar i think there's going to be a lot of stuff in here that you will be able to use at least when you're considering getting into major structural damage because now we've got this thing set up where the pieces are going to come together now it's time to put the steam to this thing and start cranking on stuff to see if it's actually going to fight back or it's going to give up the ghost and start turning the right way so that said i will see you next time don't forget to give me a like comment on things below get some people talking and um subscribe if you haven't see you soon